uh, you've seen uh, your guy Peterson uh, a few times now. Uh, just what are your impressions of him? What makes him so effective? Um, I mean, he, he looks like a polished, uh, polished pitcher. Um, you know, he looks like he's under control. He's composed. Um, even with runners on, you know, I think when the game starts to speed up, your heart rate goes up. Um, I don't really see that from him. So that's, um, you know, that's encouraging to see, um, you know, from a guy that's, that's making his first couple starts. Um, and, you know, he's, he's a competitive guy. I mean, you can, you can see it in his face when he comes off the field and he gives up a run. Um, you know, that attitude will, will, will take you a long way. So, um, you know, we're excited for him. From an offensive standpoint, when you guys get those uh, two early homers, one from you, one from Pete, what do you think that does to the lineup? Well, yeah, I mean, homers are homers are, are, are big, especially when they, uh, you know, you got guys on and um, put you ahead by by three runs. Um, you know, the Marlins made a push back, and and um, we needed more. JD hit another big home run. Um, you know, he also had a, a good at bat to bring a guy in with uh, with less than two outs from from third base. And um, you know, I mean, we can't depend only on the homers, but you know, we understand that. But we're gonna hit them. You know, we got a lot of guys with pop and. And uh, so to see JD do both uh, was was a good sign for us, and and uh, we'll we'll continue to to try to do that. Next question comes from Justin Toscano. Hey, Michael. Through a quarter of the season now, what stood out most to you about how things have gone for you guys? Um. Well, I mean, I think you you know we could all say we we got to play better baseball. Um. You know, we we won tonight. That's a start. Uh, we got to come out tomorrow with the same intensity and, and um, you know, put together another win. Um, but, you know, that being said, I think we saw a lot of good things tonight. So uh, we're excited about the win tonight. We'll, we'll enjoy it for tonight, but tomorrow we got to go back to work. Is it at the very least encouraging, even though you guys, you know, are under 500, that you've been in every game? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we expect to be in every game. We expect to compete every day. Um, you know, it's good to have uh, Jaselman back. You know, Jaselman is a is a huge part of our, our bullpen. Um, you know, Pete's starting to heat up a little bit. We know he's going to hit. Um, and you know, just just things are starting to move in that direction. So we gotta you know we gotta stay locked in, and we gotta uh, like I said, come out tomorrow ready to win. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Luis, your first question tonight comes from Steve Galbs. Hey, Luis, we've been, um, we've been talking so much about J.D.'s defense over the last few days. Um, the 12-game hitting streak, though, what have you seen from him at the plate during this stretch? Well, uh, this kid is so disciplined with his approach. Um, and, you know, that's, that's kind of like his um, – you know, number one thing, you know, along with his, with, with his ability to hit. I mean, this kid uh, does a lot of homework. Uh, and, uh, you know, knowing these opponents, uh, he's uh, one of the guys that's really helped that ever since um, we've been doing, you know, our hitters uh, meetings and everything that we need to do in order to prepare as a team offensively. And he's, uh, he's a guy that's been a model for um, everyone on the team on how to prepare for a game. And, um, you know, he shows it. I mean, he, he sits on a pitch and he gets it and, 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 you know, he can do some damage. And I think that a bat there with the three run homer that gave us some, some really room uh, later in the game, who's, who's, who's committed to that pitch, he got it first pitch and, you know, his, his uh, conviction on swinging behind it. I mean, you, you guys saw it. So that's what stands out the most, you know, along with his hitting ability, but, you know, it's just his approach, his way, the way he prepares for the game is just, uh, it's something special. Um, Obviously, the, the home run is one thing for Pete, but have you sensed him starting to turn a corner here over the last few days? He has been slowing things down, uh, uh, Steve. He, he has been able to lay off a couple of pitches. We saw him reach out of one in his last at bat, but um, he's been uh, laying off more of those, you know, and um, that's why he's been able to find the ones that he can uh, really do some damage with. And um, ever since that first game when he, when he – that game where he had the three walks, um, I I had you know the sense of him just slowing things down, getting ready earlier, and being able to recognize uh, pitches better. So 
um, that is now transferring into him impacting the ball more, uh, giving more pro consistently, and then you know, that can result to a lot of good things for him, like especially you know 170 mile per hour homer that he hit that he hit tonight. So, you know, we, you want to build a consistency now on that. You know, Pete's got a great attitude. Um, you know, going through um, any kind of you know struggle or not going, not getting a result or anything like that. I mean, he can bounce back quick. He's very coachable, and I think a lot of people have been just talking to him, not overdoing things, but just to make sure that he slows down and he's able to, um, you know, just minimize uh, his his movements at the plate and he's able he's able to see the ball better. Right. Last question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, Louis. Uh, I was just wondering what you thought about Gaselman, and obviously it had been basically a year since he had pitched. Yep. So the strong first outing, uh, stuff was sharp. I mean, you can see uh, the movement from the side uh, that it was, it's just nasty. I mean, some some uh, um, weird swings uh, against him taken, you know, whether it was slider, whether it was the sinker. Um, I mean, it, was, it looked, it looked uh, the sinker looked terrible. Like it was like, you know, just sinking at the very last moment, you know, at a, at a hard velocity. So, uh, that was a strong inning for him. I mean, he gave us a, a big seven inning uh, that, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was very important for us tonight. And, you know, the way the guys threw the ball today, even though, um, you know, Familia struggled a little bit with his command, uh, Drew came in and picked him up. But I think we have everybody available for tomorrow now with the pitch counts and, and, and the audience that we had tonight. I was going to ask if JD had not hit that home run, would, was your plan A to go six outs with Lugo there? Uh, probably. You know, um, it was one of the thoughts that, that we had in mind, one of the discussions we had in the dugout, that it was a possibility that Lugo will come out and do the six outs and, and, uh, and you know, see from there. Obviously, pitch count in the eighth inning, it's got a lot to do with that. And he, he, had, a, he had a, I think it was a 10 pitch or something like that uh, uh, inning. But it was it was a probability we were going to go there for two innings. Thank you. Next question is from Mike Puma. Louis, are you at the point now with Peterson? It's been since the start. You kind of know what to expect from him at this point. What you're going to get? Yeah, uh, you know this kid. You know, we talked about this, Mike, and um, just the way he presents himself and you know he carries himself. Uh, it's uh, you know, he's a competitor. He wants the ball. He wants to attack you. And I thought uh, tonight, you know, he had a couple of challenges where uh, his command wasn't there like it's been in the in the in the first two outings. And he bounced back. Uh, you know, uh, Mount Bissett uh, uh, by uh, uh, Jeremy uh, uh, in the middle of an inning. I mean, kind of like gave him a breather. And he's he's a kid that responded really well to that. You know, and this. This kid handles himself well, uh, so you, you know you expect that he's going to go through lineups a couple times, and he's going to be able to induce contacts, mix well, um, and he's got he's got repertoire for righties and lefties. So um, you know, just just it's encouraging to see him out there competing and, and helping us out. You know, giving those giving us those five innings that he gave us tonight. He gives up he gave us six before, and I think uh, five in another outing. So it's he's been giving us what we what we want. You know, from a starter, you know, like he's been in a in a in a fifth spot for us. I mean, if you get Stroman back here at, at some point uh, pretty soon, could, could you see a tough rotation decision to have to make? Well, we, we, we know. we'll have to get there yet uh, still. And, uh, you know, like I, I said earlier today, Stro, it's, uh, it's going to have another sim game outing uh, just to once again test his, his calf and everything that, that he will do in game. Um, you know, as you guys know, it's, it's something that we're paying attention to because the health is a big part right now uh, in in uh, in the game, and we want him to bounce back and be able to when he start, he can finish the season for us, uh, you know, knocking on wood. And um, but we'll have to get there. Right now, Baby Peterson is our, is our fifth starter. And he's done a great job. Next question is Justin Descano. Hey, Louis, um, what have you learned about your team through a quarter of the season? Well, uh, you know, first of all, is that this guy don't they don't give up? Um, I know we've, uh, you know, we lost a few tough games, um, but you know, it's been one hit away 
you know, always pushing, bases loaded. Uh, one hour we're creating situations, and we, we we've talked about the last few days about us hitting good runners in scoring position. But these guys, no matter what kind of deficit we have in the scoreboard, these guys are battling and they're they're cheering for each other, they're backing up each other, and you know. Uh, uh, um, appreciating every quality of bat that's taken uh, there to create situations. So um, that's one of the things that I really uh, appreciated from these guys, and I've learned. I mean, these guys don't give up. And uh, when, when you have a team like that, you know, they're they're easy to talk to because we can model a lot of good things that we do out there. So, um, you know, great win tonight. And, and you know, we uh, I think I heard Mark, Michael said that, you know, we're celebrating it uh, briefly, but we gotta, we got to get ready to keep going. we got a, we got a 1 o'clock game tomorrow against these guys again. Thank you. Next question is from Rich Catino. Hey, Louie. Um, Michael Conforto hitting the ball really well. What does it tell you that all three of his homers this year have come off left-handed pitching? He's well grasped to the ground, well balanced. I don't think, uh, you know, he seems that he wants to use the big part of the field and, you know, he's been able to some breaking balls uh, that are in the zone for him and being able to stay his swing, his beautiful swing to the ball. So, you know, this this kid is, uh, he's always been, you know, that that good hitter. And, uh, you know, when he stays to the big part of the of the, of the yard, you know, he can he can do some damage because he will spray the ball. You guys know that he can, he can hit a no-pull bomb, he can pull one too, he can do a lot of, a lot of things. And I think that's, one of the adjustments that able to make uh, to make one game to one game to another, uh, and uh, you know he he runs into a pitch and he does just exact exactly that what you guys saw today. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Luis. Good night, guys. JD, your first question tonight comes from Steve Elves. Hey, JD. Hey, JD. Um, on that home run, you going up there looking to swing first pitch, new pitcher, expecting him to try and get ahead of you with the fastball there? Um, lately, I've been a little hesitant on the first pitch. Um, over the past couple of days, I've, I've been wanting to be a little bit more aggressive um, and just be ready to hit, have that kind of yes, yes, no mentality, always be ready to hit and then take, not have that take, take, and then swing. Um, and that – that pitcher, you know, in Brian's scoring position, I just look for something out over the plate. Um, there was one out, you know, runner on third, I think. So, um, you know, I was just looking for something to hit out in the outfield or get something elevated. Um, I ended up just squaring it up and just driving it to right field. On the fifth inning, the the sacrifice fly, I mean, that's something that, that Luis has talked about as well. You guys, you know, need to not necessarily try and change too much when – you have an opportunity to just drive a runner in. Um, you're approaching that spot. Were, were you able to simplify it and, and get done what you were attempting to get done there? Yeah, for sure. Um, in that, you know, in that sequence, we're trying just trying to, you know, get the run in, especially after them. I think they scored and we wanted to answer back. I think it was, I can't remember the situation was in fifth inning, but, um, but yeah, we wanted to answer back and it was an opportunity, you know, uh, I think it was first and third. Um, I just tried to, you know, stay short to the baseball, get something elevated, hit out to the outfield that way, stay out of the ground, stay out of the double play. And, um, you know, again, just uh, taking good swings, working with the hitting coaches, and um, just, you know, today was a good day. Thanks. Next question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, J.D. Uh, obviously, we've talked a lot about your defense over the past week, moving to third base. Uh, the fact that you're – Perform well offensively as well at this time. Is that a complete coincidence in your eyes, or can there be a comfort level when you know you're feeling good defensively? You can bring that to the plate with you. Yeah. Um, over the last yeah last over the last couple of weeks, I've been having good cuts, but um, just in between pitches, I, I didn't really hit the panic button as much or you know too much, and I just continue to you know um, better every day. Work with the hitting coaches, you know, work at video. Uh, or watch some video and, you know, once again, um, just do what I, I can try, you know, swing at strikes, uh, be on time with the fastball. Uh, but to your question, answer to your question, you know, defense, I, I played the most games there in my minor league career um, in anything. So um, I'm a little bit more comfortable over there. Um, and, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, defense correlating with offense, but um, I just try – 
to separate defense and offense, just try to have a good at bat when I'm playing and, you know, separate and just try to do my best out on defense. So, um, am I comfortable, more comfortable over there? Yeah, I would say it's because I've been playing way more games over there. And also, you know, you've got a game hitting streak now, career best for you. You don't usually, we don't usually see guys with long hitting streaks in the game this today, so with all the strikeouts, the way the game is played. The players yeah. still talk about that, does it still mean something, hitting streaks? Um, kind of, yeah. I just go there and I just try to look for a ball I can barrel. Uh, I'm not worried going up there looking for a hit. And, you know, I'm no, if, if I'm there looking, searching for a hit, then I'm going to start, you know, chase pitches. Really have to play. Um, so I just go up there, you know, try to be balanced, pitch to drive. If I can do those things on a day in and day out basis, then I think good things will happen. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Next question is from Justin Toscano. Hey, JD, in a short season, how do you balance um, the sense of urgency with like not trying to press when things, you know, might not be going your way as a, as a team? Yeah, no, I mean, um, obviously there's a little bit of sense of urgency, but um, is it being 60 games out of 162. So um, we try to keep that out of our minds in the clubhouse. Um, I think when we start thinking that there's a sense of urgency, we try to do too much. Over the last couple of days, um, we've really tried to slow things down. I know we lost last night four to three, but towards the end of the game, we were really barreling up some pitches. Um, uh, Buff, you know, he, uh, Eddie Alvarez made a play. Um, on that last play. So we're just, we weren't really getting that big of a hit, but we were making good at bats. We were barreling up balls. So um, I don't think, you know, we just try to stay away from that sense of urgency. Um, I think it does more damage than good. Um, I think we just need to continue to pass the baton, um, play every inning, um, not worry about other teams, not worry about, you know, how many games are left or how many games back. So, you know, we just, again, we just slowed things down the last couple of days, and today was just a good day, and uh, we got the W. Thank you. Next question is from Ed Coleman. Hey, J.D. Uh, Tony mentioned the 12-game hitting streak, and every player is trying to be uh, consistent. Um, do you think you've elevated your offensive game this year to be – allows you to be more consistent? Uh, I wouldn't say elevated. I, I just try to learn from what I've, you know, experienced from last year and try to uh, translate it over here. Um, looking at scouting reports, past guys that I've faced, you know, trying to, you know, get ahead of what the pitcher may throw to me in that situation. Um, so I don't really try to do uh, elevate my game. I don't try to, you know, again, have that sense of urgency. Um, I think I'm a little bit comfortable up there just because of, you know, the past success and the past failures that I've learned from. Um, and just knowing that, you know, hitting is really hard nowadays. The guys are throwing 95, 98, you know, wipeout sliders, good change-ups, good splits. So, um, you know, you got to have that positivity in the back of your mind that, you know what, you're going to fail, you know, 70, 80 percent of the time. You just got to learn from those times where you get out. That way you can make an adjustment to your next of that. Thank you. Next question comes from Mike Fitzpatrick. Hey, JD, what do you uh, what do you think of the way that ball left Pete's bat his home run to left field there? <laughs> oh, my God, rocket! I was actually, I mean, I was on first and I, I was moving. I thought it was going to be a double off the wall, you know, bang bang play at the plate, and I was moving, but I was kind of kind of happy it hit the concrete. That way I could pull up and not, you know, run that extra 180, 880 feet. So I thought it was pretty cool. It was good for him. He finally, you know, um, he's been, he's been struggling. He's been wanting to do, you know, so good. Um, and he just finally, you know, squared a ball. I know he squared a ball up in Boston, but just to see him have those good ABs, um, find, you know, find the barrel and, you know, I'm just happy for him. And, uh, you know, it's good for us as a team to continue to have good at bats and, Continue to do damage. Next question comes from Steve Gelbs. Hey, JD, just uh, continuing on Pete, you know, the two of you are, are so similar in how you think at bats, how you prep for, for pitchers. Have you sensed that he was starting to come around just watching him the last few days? Have, have you sensed that he had turned a corner here a little bit? 
Yeah, he. I mean, for sure. I mean, he's been doing some video looking back on last year's. Um, I think all of us hitters, we try to make so many adjustments and try to be our best selves instead of staying with our strengths. And I've been, you know, uh, in his ear. A lot of guys have been helping him out, but um, he's really slowed it down. Um, he's got he's got back to his form from last year. You could see starting. You could see him start using his legs. Um, really getting that big, um, that big stride that he usually has, where he can, you know, produce that power. Um, and you're starting to see it. You start to see him le letting it eat, you know, letting it big hacks on 2-0 or just um, in general. And so when you start to see that with Pete, you know, he starts, you know, feeling a little more comfortable. He's starting to feel a little more in sync with his lower half and up or his uh, 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 upper half and lower half. Um, and he's he's doing well. He's seeing the pitches, um, but. Uh, he's done a pretty good job of, you know, turning the page from, um, you know, hitting or hitting a little bit of a cold streak. And you know what? He's having fun right now. And I think that's the biggest thing is his attitude and his positivity um, in the clubhouse and on the field. And he's just, you know, going out there and having fun. Thank you very much for your time this evening, J.D. Hey, no problem. Thanks, Steve. David, your first question tonight comes from Steve Gelbs. Hey, David. Um... You know, we've, we've talked so much early season about your poise on the mound. Uh, you had a couple stretches tonight where you lost the strike zone for a little bit and then were able to, to really get it back pretty quickly. In those moments when you do lose the zone, how were you able to, to bring it back and, and get back on track like you did? Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a couple stretches, like you said, that got away. There was, there was two times where I threw seven balls in a row, and that just can't happen. Um, that's – down the road that's going to hurt and uh it's just unacceptable for my part um but like you said my job is is to hunker down and get out of those innings um the biggest thing for me and those is is reducing the damage um trying to get out there with the least amount of damage possible and um putting myself i didn't have the greatest command tonight but um if i walk some guys i need to be able to get myself out of it so um with with great defense behind me and obviously the offensive power that we saw tonight um, and makes our job a lot easier. So you didn't have the greatest command tonight. Was there any pitch you were able to fall back on a little bit more that you felt like you had a better better command of tonight? Yeah, I mean, I felt like um, my slider got better as the game went on. Um, I felt that everything else was – I felt like I had some good command early in the game. A um, couple pitches that got away, the, the one to Forsyth was – a mistake and um, he's a good enough hitter to make me pay for it. Um, but it was just finding the pitches that were the ones that got me out of those jams. It wasn't just one pitch. There was a couple of change ups that I was able to get some strikes on. There was a couple of curveballs tonight that got some strikes. Um, so I wouldn't say there was one pitch in particular, um, but just using the pitches that Buffalo and I know are going to get us out of those jams. Next question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, David, a, f a few weeks ago, you know, there were no guarantees that you would even be in the big leagues this season. Now, having made three pretty successful rotation turns, has this at all started to feel normal? Like, okay, I'm, I'm settling in. I'm a big leaguer. This is where I'm supposed to be pitching here every five days. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's with every start, I feel like I, I get more comfortable here. I learn more, um, trying to pick the other guy's brains as much as I can, uh, and really – learn what it's like up here. I've gotten, like you said, I've gotten a good taste with three starts now. And uh, I'm just trying to work on the successes that I've had and build off of those and then take the mistakes and the lessons that I've learned and uh, correct those. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Next question comes from Ed Coleman. Hey, David. Um, Cervelli last night had a, had a big home run that put you guys in a hole that you couldn't climb back from. Uh, after the three straight singles in the first inning, He's up there, veteran hitter. Can you talk about that at bat, how you got through that, what you wanted to do? Because uh, you got him on strikeout to end things. Now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, what he did last night was irrelevant. Uh, today's a new day, and we were looking to win a game today. Um, and I think that's the mentality that we see in this locker room is even if we do drop a game, everyone comes back the next day, and, and they're ready to win. Um, and I think that's awesome to see throughout the clubhouse. Uh, guys bring energy every day, and so – um, for me, it was just going back on the confidence that I have in myself to, to pitch well. Um, I think I've been up here uh, for a reason, and 
that's that gives me confidence to get out of any jam and i take that in my starts uh and the most detrimental thing for me is if i get down on myself then um that's that hurts me so uh for me in that situation i gave up three singles I, it is what it is but like i said earlier biggest thing for me in, in those situations is minimizing the damage and, and getting us back in the dugout so that offense can uh, do what they do best. Thanks. Next question comes from Mike Chet Patrick. Hey, David, I know with no fans in the stands, it probably was not exactly the, the home debut you envisioned on the night you got drafted, but what, what was it like to, to pitch here at City Field for the first time in, in a Mets uniform? It was awesome. Uh, I've been looking forward to pitching at home, and it, it was good to finally get out there in a real game. I pitched in a couple sim games and live games in summer camp, but um, to have another team in the batter's box and, and have those guys behind me and us all working as one, it was it was a really good feeling to uh, to pitch at home and get a win tonight. David, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thanks, guys. This concludes the Mets post-game Zoom room.